Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to Accountability Sundays. Um, my name is Shanae Jones. I'm an herbalist and the founder of Flyest, the hip hop inspired tea company. And every first Sunday of the month at 10 a.m., I do something that I like to call Accountability Sundays for Buy from a Black Woman. It's an opportunity for me to give back to the nonprofit, of course, but it's also an opportunity to kind of talk about what well, ramble sometimes, but talk about. <laughs> The things that are really important to me, which is one of them is productivity. Um, it's something that I've actually become pretty good at. Um, I've been a person who's been able to do work as an early riser. I've also been able to do, be someone who starts their work or work later in the morning and still manage to be productive. I've also been able to kind of work late into the night. Um, using the productivity tips that I have. So I'm not necessarily someone who's like going to tell you, get up at 4 a.m. to make sure you have more time or, you know, work until 2 a.m. to make sure you have more time. Um, I've tried lots of different ways. And with Accountability Sundays, I get an opportunity to talk about the things that are interesting to me, share some tips um, and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, feel free to put them in the comment box and I'll certainly get to them. But anyway, here's a quick little overview of who I am. Um, I am the very first buy from a Black Woman Business Grant recipient. And like I said, Accountability Sundays is just one of the ways that I can give back to the nonprofit. Um, I'm also the founder of Flyest, which is uh, the hip hop inspired tea company. It started as Ivy's Tea Company back in November of 2016, in part uh, with the help of the Buy From a Black Woman Business Grant. And I call myself a productivity and time management extraordinaire and also a writer. Um, I really am. This is like an older headshot of me. As you can see, the kid had makeup. You know what I'm saying? So it's Sunday today. We, we don't have to do all of that. <laughs> so today's topic is 10 tips to make more time for your work or to make time for your work in general. And um, I hope that you can see this, but this comes in part from the book, Make Time. Um, This is by Jake Knapp and John Zaratsky. I don't think that I actually put a slide here about that. So I'm gonna have to link to it in the con in the description box. I do apologize for failing to do that. Um, And so basically the premise of the book is there are different ways to teach you or help you find uh, strategies that'll help you focus on what matters every single day. Um, And so I read, I listened to the audio book. I will say that I read it, you know, even though I did listen to the audio book. I use the word red. Um, so I read it uh, twice <clears throat> after seeing it on a lot of like uh, tech bros kind of books to read at the end of the year. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a try. Let's see if these people know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's actually pretty good. I do 100% recommend it. Um, but here are 10 things that I took away from the book that I think will actually help you. So the first one is to set a highlight for the day every single day. And so the idea is that I know for me, I tend to make a to-do list. Um, I try not to put more than 10 things on a to-do list, but you know how it is. Um, and so I make my to-do list and I don't necessarily feel accomplished unless I've crossed everything off. But uh, what Jake Knapp and John Zaratsky, the authors of Make Time, suggest is that you make a highlight for the day. That is a priority for the day. And if you are able to achieve that priority, then you really don't have to worry about anything else. Well, that's a lie. But, you know, the, the highlight is the priority. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, I know that it can be difficult to choose one priority for the day, because especially if you have um, obligations to multiple people or you wear multiple hats in your, your business or even in your day job, if you are someone who works a day job and has a side hustle with your own business, um, it can be very challenging to choose your highlight of the day. And while the authors Knapp and Zaratsky made sure to share lots of different tips to help you um, choose your highlight of the day, the one that I found to be the best was the idea of the front burner technique, which is if you were cooking, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you cook in, you know, if you like me, you cook, you know what I'm saying? Like your rice and stuff goes on like the back, you know what I'm saying? Because you put your water in there, your butter, your salt, you got the rice in the pan and you got the water in there and you just going to put that on there. You're going to bring it to a boil and you're going to let it simmer for like 23, 25 minutes, whatever different depends on the type of rice you cook it. Okay. Rice police don't come for me. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you could get rice, but that's on the back burner. You know what I'm saying? Because it's simmering and you don't have to get to it right now. Whereas on the front burner for me right away is going to be my, my chicken, maybe my steak, um, something that I don't want to burn. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep my eye on it. 
And so thinking and using that technique to determine what's my highlight of the day has really helped me. It is the some whatever I have to do right away, whatever is most immediate, whatever is most pressing or what will have the most impact. Um, and sometimes um, you will choose the exact same highlight every single day. And we're going to get to that later on. Um, I have been using this for the past two months um, because I read Make Time back in December, um, in the early part of December. And so I did it for the month of December and I also did it for the month of January. And I've certainly been using it um, for these past few days here in February. And it has been very effective for me. And I've actually decided to use the exact same highlight every single day. But let's keep going. Now the tip, the second tip is to schedule your highlight. Now, I didn't bring it right here. I ain't got it with me, y'all, my bad. Y'all know how I am. Y'all already know what I'm going to say. You already know what I'm going to tell you. You've got to plan your week. I know that people tell me all the time, I don't have time to plan, but listen to me. Planning your week, studies show that planning your week can save you. 20% of your time and actually doing your tasks. So just take whether, you know, it could be 15, 20 minutes. You know, it doesn't have to take a long time. I'm a decorative planner. I've shared my planner before. I got stickers in there. I got all types of things. Like I done bought more stickers to put into my, my planner. Um, it's important to me that I decorate it. It's important to me that I put things on paper because that also helps reinforce it in my mind. And I'm telling you that if you were to take the time to plan and just stick to your plan, you know, just say, you know, um, you can do something like calendar blocking, which is one of my favorite things to do, which is that, you know, from nine to 11 a.m., I'm going to uh, pack orders. That's what it would be for me. I'm going to give you my schedule. I would be packing orders. Um, from 11 to 12, I'm going to have lunch and I'm also going to walk my dog, Foxy Cleopatra. And then from 12 to four o'clock, um, I might be restocking tea or I might restock honey um, or I might schedule email for the next month or I might uh, schedule social media content for the next month. Or maybe I don't have any content at all and I need to take the rest of that day to actually set up my tripod and film myself breaking down boxes, going to the trash can, answering customer emails, um, doing behind the scenes things that I can use for content for my social media pages. So it doesn't necessarily have to be from 11 to 11.30, I'm gonna answer 10 emails and, and from 12.30 to two, I'm gonna do this. You can definitely make it more highbrow and just make sure that you're focusing on things <clears throat> that um, fall into whatever category you wanna focus on. You know what I'm saying? So if it's content creation, um, then for me, it might be like, oh, well, these are the sounds that I saved on TikTok. Let me just make some quick videos to these sounds. Or maybe it'll be, I don't have any sounds just yet. I'm going to do a lazy TikTok week. Let me just film myself writing. Let me film myself packing orders. Let me film myself restocking the shelves. You know, those sorts of things can be considered content creation. And I'm just going to do them in this time. Okay. So you want to take whatever your highlight is and you want to schedule it. You want to put it on your calendar and you want to make sure that you are dedicating time to actually getting the highlight done. Because just because you set the highlight, if you don't put it on the calendar, you know it's not about to happen. At least I know for me. I can't hold it up in here. Um, I tell people all the time, the brain is for making ideas, not holding them. So your brain is, is, is too busy. It's too busy creating new stuff to be holding on to one thing or two things or whatever. And in some instances, it'd be 10, 15, 20 things. When you do a brain dump and you think about all of the stuff you had in your head, it's like, oh my gosh. I had all of that in here. No wonder I'm not creative. You know, there's no room left. Um, anyway, so schedule your highlight. Put it on your calendar. Make sure that you plan time. Whether you use a digital calendar or you use paper and pen like me. Um, the second thing is to just say no. Don't be afraid to flake out, okay? Um, and, and make time. Jake Knapp and John Zaratsky actually have a chapter called Flake It Till You Make It, okay? So the idea is that if someone's like, hey, girl, you want to go to the bar on Friday at, 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 you know, after work and you know that you actually need to uh, work on a business plan or you need to set some goals for the next month or you need to create content, you know what I'm saying? You might be like, ah. Uh, yeah, Vanessa, I could be there, girl, for sure. And then, you know, 345, 4 o'clock, you text Vanessa, girl, I'm not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you do it the day before. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with flaking it on people in order to do what you need to do. Um, And, and there's some people going to be like, ooh, 
oh, she not a good friend. Um, listen, I am. I send flowers. I don't miss birthdays. You got a special day coming. I got you. Um, you know, a congratulatory thing. Shout out to all of the social media and the technology apps out there. I could send you anything from anywhere. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have a problem <laughs> with making that happen for you, friend. Um, but when it comes to flyest, when it comes to my business, oh yes definitely the top priority shout out to you and everything you got going on but this is my priority um i recently saw a tiktok video from dame dash and he was actually talking to somebody and uh he said you know you can do whatever you want to do you're gonna have to sacrifice everything else for it and in some instances you know it might seem extreme you know i'm not saying sacrifice your mother or sacrifice your kids um though in some instances you might have to you might have to miss a basketball game you might have to miss a chess meet you know but the the thing is is are you working towards the end goal if you can see it in your mind you can hold it in your hand so why not give it 110 percent to get for to get to it and with that kind of motivation and that kind of inspiration sometimes it makes it a little easier to say no especially to the things you really really don't have to do um, and the third thing that I would say when it comes to scheduling your highlight is, you know, you can become a morning person. There's lots of people who are going to tell you to wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m., um, or you can be an evening person, you know, just find out what works for you. Um, and, and don't be afraid to switch it up, you know, try different things. You know, I've been a person who gets up at 4 a.m. I've also been a person who I let my body get up. And, and I find that usually if I sleep, my body's going to wake up around 7 a.m., so if I wake up at 7 a.m., that means I'm working a little later in the evening. If I get up at 4 a.m., I'm in the bed by 9. You know what I mean? So, you know, just whatever works for you and make sure that you're setting aside two to three hours to work on whatever your highlight is for the day. So, yes, make your highlight a priority. My third tip is simply quit when you are done. Um, you know, commit to that schedule that you made because you've already, you know, blocked out time in your calendar. Um, and if you are wise, you know, you're going to put the things that you have to do for your business or whatever your priorities are. Um, you know, but then you're also going to set aside other time. You know, I know I have to set aside time for cooking for the week and I got to set aside time for doing the laundry. Um, and I got to set aside time for exercising and also setting aside, you know, two hours a day to read, um, an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. I set up time to do my Bible study, all that sort of stuff. You know, it's not exactly um, only business stuff. You know, there's personal things that I put onto my calendar. I'm making sure that I set aside time for a movie night. I set aside time for my self-care, you know, to make sure that I take a nice bubble bath and all that stuff and focus on me. Um, I know that it might seem anal, but sometimes it just won't get done because my priority is flyest and that's what I love to do. And that is what I will do if I don't set aside time for the other things that make me happy with other things that make me capable of doing the things that I need to do for my business. So um, my, my third tip is to quit exactly when you're done. If you say I'm going to answer emails from 11 to 1230 at 1230, you stop answering email. You know, it doesn't matter whether you got your inbox down to zero or not. Um, don't add just one more thing. Don't give it another hour. If you say, I'm going to do something for 60 minutes, give it 100% of your time in those 60 minutes and quit. You're not going to get any extra more time. Um, you know, the time that you've allotted to that task is the time that you have. And any other time that you give to that task is time that you're stealing from something else that you might want to do. And um, so just, just, you know, eventually the more you do it, right, you'll get faster and faster at it. Um, you know, when I first started editing videos, it would take me hours, child. Now I'm bloop, 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 right then and there on the phone. You know what I'm saying? I've also adapted the idea that done is better than perfect because I ain't got time for all of that. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, is that um, as you give yourself time to do things, you do it more religiously and you practice more and more and you just find yourself faster. So you won't have to really be extending your time um, or taking time away from other things that you have, other priorities, to be honest. The fourth tip is to create barriers to your distractions. Um, so there are a few things that you might want to do, um, but the main thing is to focus, focus, focus. If you're on TikTok, you've heard that song, that sound probably focus, 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 focus. Um, use focus apps. There are apps that will um, deter you from participating in certain websites. I use, I do have a MacBook, but I use Chrome. And I, I know, I know y'all, they, they, they got all types of problems. But listen, Google got my back. 
You feel me? So I'm trusting Google. I'm not messing around with Safari. I just don't got time. I prefer Google Chrome. Anyway, so I use Chrome and there are lots of like third-party apps that you can download and you can add specific websites to um, certain apps, um, time blocking apps, focusing apps that'll stop you from going onto different websites. So on my on my Google Chrome app, I have an app that's um, it's something called like Blocker, and uh, I will use it to block Twitter. Or I'll use it to block Facebook and other social media apps, things that might deter me from focusing on my business and focusing on whatever tasks I'm working on, and it will stop me. It won't even let me go to those websites. <laughs> Um, and I can set it for a certain period of time, or I can set it for a certain time period throughout the day. Um, there's also apps that you can use on your phone that help you plant trees and all sorts of things while you're working. And when you stop working or you disrupt your focus, um, the trees die, you know, so if you are a, an environmentalist, that might be one of the things you look for. I also encourage you to schedule phone breaks. I did talk about planning, you know, but um, if you're like me, I use the Pomodoro technique. That means that I work for 50 minutes and then I take a break for 10 minutes. I do that basically every hour on the hour. So I'll start work at nine, end at 9.50, take a 10 minute break. And in that 10 minute break, I'll use the bathroom, drink like eight to 16 ounces of water, um, probably do like some jumping jacks or check my phone. You know, I use my phone during that time. Um, I also encourage you to turn off the notifications. Those notifications do kind of, they make you want to respond. And we're going to get to that point later on as well. But, you know, you're on your own time. You're the boss. You know, you you don't have to respond whenever the phone dings. The phone don't ring you. <laughs> you can also log out. Um, one of the things that I've actually struggled with is um, using my Apple Watch. Um, sometimes it really just, it has my notifications on it. So I've been really thinking about just getting a simple wristwatch that just tells me the time. This way, I am not tempted to scroll through or get buzzed or dinged using my phone, my my Apple Watch. Um, some um, Another tip for make time is to simply stop using these devices altogether. So the idea would be that um, if you work um, somewhere, you know, where you're allowed to use your phone, maybe instead of you bringing your phone, you'll leave your phone in your car from nine to five, you know, when you're at work or eight to four, um, which is, you know, it might seem extreme, but, you know, it's certainly necessary if you find that you're really, I don't want to say addicted, but that is what it is. You know, if you find that you have an addiction to the phone or you feel that you get instant gratification from the likes and stuff like that, like we all, we all fall victim to it, you know, so you just want to make sure that you're staying in control because, um, you know, I hate to sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist, right? But the truth of the matter is that these apps, they don't really want you to have a good time. You know, they're not really on there for you to make money. That's like a secondary thing for them. They want minute, they want seconds, minutes, hours of your life. They want you on the phone scrolling. That's how they make their money. That's how they can control you. That's how they can get you to respond the way they want you to respond. And so that's a, why the next tip is to avoid apps with the endless scroll. You know, that would be Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, um, Pinterest, you know, those apps where you can just scroll and you'll never reach the bottom. You can't reach the bottom because content is being created faster than um, the phone takes to scroll and refresh. Um, there's actually a kid on TikTok who actually had a whole, I mean, on YouTube, had a whole video about that. So these are some tips to help you focus. You know, try one, try two, um, experiment with them over time and find out what works for you. The next one is to slow down. Here I talked about um, turning off notifications. Um, and the next tip is simply to slow down um, and be slow to respond, excuse me, be slow to respond. You know, just because somebody emails you at nine o'clock doesn't mean that you have to email them back at 9.02. You know what I'm saying? They can get a response at 12. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They can get a response when you get back to checking your phone. Right now, you're not checking the phone. You know what I'm saying? And if you need to set up a, an automatic, an autoresponder um, that, you know, lets people know that, hey, I check my email at 11 and 5, or I check my email once in the morning and once in the evening or whatever, you know, that's totally appropriate. Um, Especially if you run your own business, you know, give yourself some breathing room sometime. You are in control. You know, you can set how the customer service works for your business. And maybe in your career as well, you might find that you're able to try this um, in an effort to kind of get in the zone and stay in the zone. You might find that other coworkers appreciate that. 
tip number six is quite simple. You know what I'm saying? Stop watching TV. You know, that's a lot of time that you do suck. Um, and I know that there are folks who are, you know, not going to like that idea. And I know that there are people who um, feel like you should have simple pleasures in your life, like television. And I don't disagree. You know, if you follow me on my personal social media pages, you know, I love my copaganda. Okay. Y'all know I don't miss Law and Order SVU. And I do not miss me an episode of Law and Order Organized Crime. Okay. I watch it faithfully. But the show comes on on Thursdays and I watch it on Sunday evening. Okay. Um, that's when I can watch TV. I have a movie night on Fridays and I watch a lot of my shows on Sunday evenings or Sunday afternoon into the evening because the morning time I usually spend doing Bible study and reading. I have like a little readathon. Anyway, my point is, is that you can't spend so much time watching television, especially if you have to schedule your highlight and you're not able to do it in the morning. If you are a PM person, an evening person, and most of the shows are coming on from like 8 to 11 PM, that's three hours where you would have been working on your business or whatever your highlight was and you didn't get to do it because you was watching BMF. And trust me, I know BMF is good, you know? So, <laughs> you know, just decide, schedule your highlight and make that decision. Um, and tip number seven is to get in the flow. Um, get into your zone, however that looks for you. Maybe that means you have to close your office door. Sometimes you got to create deadlines. They're not real deadlines. You know what I'm saying? You got to create fake deadlines. Like, oh, I'm going to schedule my uh, my emails for the month of March by February 16th. Anybody, who, who, fin who can, are they going to do? Fire me if I don't have it by the 16th? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, um, you have to create some sort of sense of urgency. This is why the new year and new year's resolutions are such a big thing because they create this sense of urgency. Um, I did talk about this a bit in, here it is. I talked about that a bit in the 12 week, when I reviewed the 12 week year, I think that was last month's book. Um, but my point is, is that uh, the, the new year creates like a sense of urgency and it makes you want to set goals and all these things. Cause Hey, once it's the 31st, it flips back to the first, you can't go back, you know, but if it's just the 12th, the 10th, the 11th, you know what I'm saying? That's not special days. You know what I'm saying? Unless you make them special days. So create deadlines and, and also create rewards for meeting your deadlines. Um, I would also encourage you to create your own soundtrack using playlists, using ASMR, um, whatever works for you. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, I recently um purchased a bunch of credits um from Audible and I listen to a book probably one um it takes me like a day and a half to read a book. Um and so that's what I like to do. Um it helps me get into the flow and it helps me stay focused. And I'm one of those folks who can listen to an audiobook or a podcast while I'm doing something really mundane or even while I'm doing something more complex. Um the only thing I probably can't do is listen to an audiobook while I'm like talking to y'all and showing something like this. Um but anything else? Oh yeah, we 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 locked in. You know what I'm saying? If we locked in, you know switching up. Um and the last thing I would suggest is that you start on paper to get into the zone. You know what I'm saying? Make a little outline for yourself and then go from there. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to just keep it really basic, rudimentary, paper and pen. That's all you need. Tip number eight is to treat your bedroom like a bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Don't be bringing work in there. Um, don't make it anything other than that. You know, make sure that it is a space where you are knowing to shut the brain off, where you're knowing to relax. And if that means you have to create like a faux turn down service for yourself, like they do at some luxury hotels, or if that means you have to create an evening routine that makes it easier for you to go to sleep, like whether that be, you know, I get into bed, I light a candle, I have a cup of tea, I, I read my book or, or I say my prayer or I journal or I reflect over the day, you know, whatever, just make sure those things that are important to helping you ease into sleep time actually happen in the bedroom only. And the ninth tip is to, to track your progress. You got to take notes, journal, and make sure that you're doing whatever you can to fine tune your days and just be, you know, 1% better than you were the day before. It's, it's marginal, um, but that 1% can make a really big difference for you. 
And this is something that I struggle with. So as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. I've recently started habit tracking and using my passion planner to, to create um, ways for me to track my progress and make sure that I'm doing those things. I, I've i been doing um, mood trackers and all sorts of stuff, just getting into the mood and shifting my, my mindset around thinking of it as such a hassle, whereas I treat it now as something that's serious and fundamental to my uh, growth as an entrepreneur and my growth as a woman. And my last tip, which isn't is is from the book, but wasn't really a tip that they shared, which is to adopt the mantra, anything above zero is a win. I know that it can be very challenging to uh, to look at your to-do list and say, man, I didn't really do much or I didn't achieve everything that I wanted to achieve. Or maybe you didn't exactly complete your highlight 100% of the way that you wanted to. But the fact that you tried or the fact that you even did something means that you're not at zero. That means you're at one, you're at two, you're at 10, whatever. You know, And anything above zero is a win. And I want you to celebrate that. Um, This has helped me tremendously this year. Um, I haven't exactly been all the way productive, as productive as I wanted to be. Um, I didn't exactly meet the sales goal that I wanted to meet in the month of January, but anything above zero is a win. I was able to pay my rent and eat and take care of myself and help a couple of family members out. So, hey, that's above zero. You feel me? Um, so I decided to share affirmations for the month. Um, this one comes from um, the late, great Audrey Lord. I am deliberate and afraid of nothing. Um, I don't think that that'll help you um, in planning your schedule and also sticking to the schedule and also to help you to dream big. So I hope that you'll say it, um, you know, every day, once a week, however you got to do it. Um, I am deliberate and afraid of nothing. Um, and here are four additional ways to be, to be productive. Follow the two-day rule. The two-day rule, I talked about that last month, is that you don't let two days go by where you don't do something. So if your goal is to walk for 30 minutes a day, you know, you walk for 30 minutes today, but you, if you don't tomorrow, you got to make sure you do it the next day. You know what I'm saying? Don't let two days go where you don't do something that you say you want to do. Try the 30 for 30 approach, which is to commit to doing something 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Um, 30 minutes really isn't that long, right? That's 2% of a day, I think. Um, maybe. I think. Don't don't listen, don't quote me. Okay, my math ain't all that. Um the third is to stack habits. So if you already have something that you do, if you already have, like there's rituals that you do, right? Like you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth. Um, well, maybe, you know, to stack a habit onto brushing your teeth, maybe you say, I'm going to do 10 push ups or something like that, you know, or I'm going to read for 30 minutes after I brush my teeth. So you already have a habit, just add another one on top of that. And then add another one on top of that and add another one on top of that until you are create until you've created the person who you want to be. And the fourth one is, is never going to change here. I think I'm going to roll with this one for the rest of the year. Anything above zero is a win. Just adopt that mind frame. If you are looking for worksheets, because I talked about the importance of setting a highlight and also starting on pen and paper, you can always visit buyfromablackwoman.org backslash educate to find lots of free resources. All you need is a printer, or if you ain't got a printer, you know what I'm saying, use your iPad, you feel me? Uh, I keep mine by me, use your iPad, and uh, you can, you know, use an Apple pen or whatever, Apple pencil, whatever they call it, and um, you can journal out your ideas, or you can find a dupe. They got lots of dupes on, on Amazon. It doesn't have to be Apple. It could be a tablet, whatever, um, and you can use these resources to help you um, brain dump, um, put ideas on paper, scratch things out, um, whatever you have to do to make sure that you are able to focus on and create a priorities list, a to-do list, um, a calendar, whatever, and get yourself in the zone. One of my favorite worksheets is the Accountability Sunday worksheet. Um, it helps you set goals for the week. Make sure that your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Um, and it also has one of my favorite things, which is the potential problems to keep you from completing your goal box. This is an opportunity for you to be forward thinking. This is an opportunity for you to say, you know what? Um, you know, I know I might be tempted to, to get with so-and-so. And you know what? How am I going to overcome that? in achieving my goal. And also I think that the why is this goal important box is really special because it can call your why to mind. Um, it makes you see the urgency. It makes you see why you want to achieve that goal. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind whenever you're goal setting. 
Um, and last but certainly not least, if you have not set your 2023 intentions, there is a free document over on the Buy From A Black Woman website where you can actually do that. Give an opportunity to celebrate yourself. Post this up somewhere, you know, your bathroom, your, on your refrigerator, wherever, and it can help you stay in that mind frame for success. Last but certainly not least, you know, I got to do my little plug for Buy From A Black Woman, y'all, you know what I'm saying, make a donation. Buy From A Black Woman is a nonprofit. It runs on the support of um other individuals um it can't have the programs it can't have the 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 touring opportunities and the vending opportunities and the grants and the accelerators it can't have any of those things that it has without donations so please consider making a tax deductible donation to buy from a black woman you can do that on their website at buyfromablackwoman.org um you can also again find all the worksheets that I shared here but there are also many more um, there's worksheets to help you do a cost analysis, um, the business plan, um, all that sort of stuff is available on the Buy From A Black Woman website. You can find other videos just like this one for free um, from myself and other Black women who teach the Buy From A Black Woman community. Like I said, for free at bfabw.tv or here on well, I guess this will be all over the place, um, but you can catch him here on, on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you name it. Um, join the Buy From A Black Woman directory if you are a Black woman entrepreneur. Um, the opportunity to join is now. The, the website is open and it's available and they're accepting applicants. Um, if you are not a Black woman and you're just watching this or you're not a Black woman entrepreneur and you're watching this and you know other Black women entrepreneurs, please share the directory with them. It is a safe space, a place where people do come and shop. Um, people do come and spend money. I'm speaking from my own experience. So I encourage you to join the Buy From A Black Woman directory and share it. Lastly, but certainly not least, share this with your friends on social media, send an email, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you got to do, you know what I'm saying? Let them know that I made this and I was here, you feel me? Um, so that's it. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this now. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me, y'all. Um, I'll be back next month on the first Sunday of the month. I'm getting the evil eye from my dog, Foxy Cleopatra, because I didn't take her out for a walk yet. But it's okay, because we're getting it. We're about to do that right now. Go into the Buy From A Black Woman website, copy your merch. You can get shirts just like this one. Um, but like I was saying, I will see you on the first Sunday of the month of March. I'll be there talking about Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, I encourage you to get the book from your local library. If you got a little money, maybe buy it and hold on to it, because it's a very good text, very important Um Otherwise, take care. Leave any questions or comments that you have below. Check the description box for links to everything that I mentioned. And y'all stay safe and make sure that you have a great month and uh, be productive. Peace.